Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls. On today's episode, we'll ask exactly what do Acme have planned for Marco Simonovich, as we've been talking about a lot of bigs that the Bulls could draft, but we forget about Marco. We'll also be doing a draft profile on another big in Walker Kessler, and then we'll end the, the podcast today asking if the Bull, if the NBA should have a supplemental draft specifically for the G League. We'll get into all that and more on today's Locked On Bulls. Oh, I see you. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Courts your team every day. That's Pat, the designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze in the building. I'm CEO Hayes, host of Chicago Bulls Central, where I cover the Bulls Monday through Friday. Today's episode, uh, we got some great stuff planned for you guys. First off, we're jumping right into it. Pat, we all be doing all these coverage on draft prospects. Even me over on Chicago Bulls Central, I've looked at a lot of bigs, and it really, it took somebody on Twitter, uh, a user over there, to really ask and say, hey, guys, can you talk about Marco Simonovich? What does that mean? What's going on with him? And you know what? Honestly, I can say, Pat, I had not even really thought about Marco and the fact of doing this draft coverage because maybe the Bulls don't go for a big. Maybe they, they focus on a veteran big because they do plan on bringing Marco Simonovich. He could be their draft pick, so to say, actually coming in and being able to contribute some minutes to the team on the NBA level next year. What do you think? Uh, yeah, shout out to Chi-Town Homie 34 on Twitter for bringing that up. Appreciate that love, brother. Uh, appreciate your, your continued support of the podcast. There's a ton of questions around Marco, but Marco fits everything from a player's standpoint that we want. Mm -hmm. Big body. Not enough weight right now, right? But lengthwise, really long arms, handles the ball like a guard. Um, you don't want to, like, when I thought about this, I was trying to think of a player that you might hope Marco becomes based on how he's mm -hmm. played. And If you look at his tape back overseas and what he did with the Windy City Bulls, I don't want to say Kevin Durant because it's Kevin Durant, but that's yeah. the only comparable player to the style of play that Marco really does. He literally handles like a guard, drives it a bucket, good finesse, nice spin move. Not as good of a shooter by any means, but mm -hmm. does shoot the ball as well. Just, just big. The question mark for me with Marco is, why is he here? Is Marco here to actually be a player? Is he a second-round pick that's going to fizzle out in a couple of years? Because if he's here to actually be a player, right, you might still use this pick. The draft breakdown might still be used, especially with a player like we're going to break down tonight in Walker Kessler, where you're thinking maybe long-term on this, we want to see Marco get in there working with Vooch this year, kind of coming off of the bench. He's going to be Vooch's replacement. He's going to have to be. He's the only dude big enough to do it. And with the skill set. And with the skill set to do it right, and then you're going to bring somebody else in to play off of Marco, also who can play off of Vooch next season. That's the only thing I can think of with it. I, I don't know what Marco's supposed to be. I don't know how the Bulls really view Marco because they essentially, like even in, dog, we saw guys playing garbage minutes all season. Yeah. We saw Malcolm Thomas in blowouts. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Malcolm Hill, Malcolm Hill in blowouts. We saw uh, Tyler Cook get minutes. We saw Tony Bradley getting minutes. No matter what, we saw no Marco. Yeah. Is that because they're trying to protect him from, hey, we don't want you to get crushed because we know you're not ready? Or mm -hmm. is that because they Billy Donovan doesn't believe in him? See, I don't... I don't think that is Billy. And and by the way, did you see the post that Nikola Vucevic made where he, him and Marco are together? They've been together this offseason. Yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. That's that's the post that I mentioned. Well, one of them before. Marco has put on weight even since the last time we oh, saw yeah. him before oh, the yeah. season. So he's working. Um, the one thing you 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 said, Marco, you you made the the Kevin Durant, I, and I'll go. I'm gonna go one step further. Marco is a faster on his feet. Nikola Vucevic. That's exactly what he is. Yeah. When you look at a young Nikola Vucevic, not Nikola now and what he turned into, but when you look at, at Vooch and what he was at coming into the league, 
there's so many similarities between not only them, their bo- look at how skinny Nikola Vucevic was when he first came in the NBA. They are, they are very similar in those ways. And I think, you know, having him, uh, Vooch take him under his wing is kind of the perfect thing. Now, I know Vooch isn't a perfect player. I even think that that Marco has a higher defensive ceiling than Vooch, still not going to be great. Like, Marco ain't going to be out there shutting anybody down, right? So, so I'm just saying. Talk, talk about uh-oh. the dude who kept getting ducked on. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this is that Marco has an elite skill set. This is something me and you talked about before. I've said this on every show that I've been on anytime Marco comes up. He's a three-level scorer. Now, it's up to him to show that he can do that at the NBA level. But, God, if he can put that together on the NBA level, he's your modern big. That's what people want from a big. He can run the floor a little bit more. Like I said, not going to be anybody you're going to see Lonzo throwing lobs to or anything like that on the fast break. But I really do, and and I have forgotten just everything and all the promise that Marco Simonovic brought. Now, I do think, to answer your question, What's going on with him? How do they see him? I think that the plan, one thing that we see with AK and Eversley is that when they have a plan, they stick to the plan. I think the plan always was year one, we're going to acclimate him in the G League, put on weight in the G League. And I've said it before, you've agreed. If Marco's not getting 10 to 12 minutes on the NBA roster, on a Chicago Bulls roster on the NBA level next season, then I start being like, okay, why is he here? No, 100%. And the question... (sighs) <laughs> the comparison to Vooch is interesting because I think Vooch always moved like a big. <laughs> like, Marco doesn't move. Like, if you watch it, he doesn't move like a big. And that's why it's like, why are you here? Yeah, He's the prototypical player that you want from overseas to come to the NBA. Yeah. He's what we, to me, you want him to become what Larry Markkinen was supposed to become. That's Now, that's a, that's a great point there. And... and but I also, like, we we know that sometimes players just don't get into rotations based on how a coach feels about them or how a coach looks at them or how it, I, I don't know why Marco couldn't get anything. That's my biggest question. There are players that were useless. Like, unless you really felt like, and, and understandably so, right, every time they threw him out there, he got dunked on. Every I, I don't think there's I time. don't think there's a game where he got thrown out there that he didn't get dunked on. Mm-hmm. So maybe you're like, we can't crush him. Yeah, he's going it's, it's to confidence. be scared of the competition yeah. that comes. But if you feel like, and granted, he's a second round pick, you lost nothing for him. But yeah. if you're if he's going to eat up a roster spot, if you feel like he's a piece that could come off of your bench and eventually move to a starting piece. If you feel like, based on how he was drafted, he's our Nikola Jokic, then I've got a problem with we don't want him his confidence to be destroyed. Send him to the minor leagues and and, and keep him safe. Well, and here's here's my only issue with that saying. Like you have talked about very heavily, and this is one of the why the last topic is the last topic for today. Very much so about the G League being a true developmental system. Right. If it's going to become that, then that's how that should be used. How many pitchers that we see that do become bullpen pitchers that do start off in the minors? Like True. So, I mean, again, I'm not I'm not completely agreeing with And don't what, and don't get the come up to the bigs just to see it. They don't really get. I see what you're saying yeah. with that. So, yeah. and I'm not saying that that's the perfect way to go about it, but I'm just saying that maybe that that's what we're seeing here now. With 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 you saying like Nikola Jokic, let's go back to Denver. That's a that's an AK draft pick. In in Jokic's rookie season, he played eighty games. Yeah, and started fifty five out of those games. Yeah. So I mean I, that that lends credibility to what you're saying too. I I don't know. I I hope that it's not Billy Donovan losing the faith in him because listen, there were times where we needed size last season. Like and like we you said, didn't use it, and we didn't use him. Like Tyler Cook got out there before. And Tyler Cook's six eight. <laughs> yeah, like I get it, right? I get Marco's like the new shiny people. Like I get the minor leagues and all of that, but like, and and I do think there's a different situation there, right? Where um, Jokic had basically nobody in front. Of him. I think it was was it still Javale McGee? Like it was nobody in front of him. Yeah. So, of course, the young rookie is gonna get a, a opportunity to play and an opportunity to shine, but. Marco wasn't better than Tony Bradley. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just I, that, no, I that's know, yeah. that's my that's my concern with it, right? Like if it, yeah. if in year one we're throwing out guys that are 25, 28 year old, uh, we don't know if you can play. Go show us something. Why aren't we doing that with our young draft pick who just came over there? That's that's my only concern with Marco. But I hope, like I said, I hope he turns into that. But we'll see even if the team believes in him becoming that player. That's that's the one thing for me. So, I mean, it's really all going to come to head at really early in the season. We'll know. Yeah. Uh, yes, he's going to play in summer league. We expect that fully. But if it comes down to it and he's not on the roster by preseason, we got some issues. Then, then, we, then we need to start asking some more questions on what's going on. Am I mistaken? Wasn't he cooking at preseason as well? Uh, he he came late, right? Or not preseason? I'm sorry. Uh, summer league. Summer league. He, he killed you. Pre- he, he came killed. late. Every everything that he played in, other than the NBA, he cooked in. He cooked in summer league. He cooked in the G league. <laughs> it just it just didn't happen for him on the NBA. No, yeah, we got a we got a, a Canada player on our hands here. <laughs> but uh, next up, we're going to be talking about getting into back into our draft profiles. We're going to be talking about a player who could be playing next, like you said, to Marco Simonovic and Nikola Vucevic next year in Walker Kessler. But first, got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. We've been asking, and Built Bar delivered. Built Bar granola bars are here. Built granola bars come in three unbelievable, unbelievable flavors flavors chocolate peanut butter chocolate coconut and white chocolate berry you want to try all three flavors well you can get those in a mix box at built.com right now the, these are so different from the built bars and the puffs built granolas are loaded with granola obviously it's the perfect combination of crunch and chewiness but just like bars and puffs these babies are packed with protein and covered in 100 real chocolate with 150 calories 15 grams of protein and only four grams of sugar built granola bars will charge your world change your world i should say built has cracked the code to better <laughs> granola <laughs> they're the perfect healthy snack to pack in your lunch, take on the road, or eat as a snack. And they're made of with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides some health benefits. So if you've been waiting for a healthy and delicious granola bar to hit the market, this is your time. Head to Built.com right now to get the granola bars. There's three delicious flavors to try in chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. Don't miss out. And we got an offer code for you. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order at built.com. All right. We're going to continue our draft player f- profiles. And next up, we're going to be covering Walker Kessler. Now, this is a player that and just initially coming into the draft coverage, even on Chicago Bulls Central, where I covered him already on, I just thought that this was going to be a guy that I wasn't impressed by. And this is why it's important to watch the tape and watch it in detail. I watch I watched probably about two hours of videos on Walker Kessler. And all I can say is this. He's almost a prototypical, exactly what we need as a backup center right now for this team. How do you feel about him, Pat? Uh, I I love Walker Kessler. Um, To me, if you plan on moving forward with a big like Vooch, you need a Walker Kessler. Uh, He excelled in drop defense. He was able to switch off on... uh, uh, um, both the guard and the big in, in, in that defensive set, guess what we run? Drop defense. Mm-hmm. Um, offensively, on the pick and roll, he, he I, I don't know if you saw this stat or, or if you went through it. 94% finish off of the pick and roll when he was receiving mm-hmm. the ball, attacking the rim. He is your prototypical big. Does he come with his flaws? Absolutely. But the biggest thing about him, uh, I, I don't know I, now. Now, I had to look at it for a while because this is not a stat that is just this season. Mm-hmm. This is in college basketball history. He ranks in the top 19% among shot blockers in college basketball history with 4.6 blocks per game this season his defense is great he uses his length well does a good job of keeping his body upright when the bigs are defending him i love his defense versus the three through the five doesn't get beat too much on those uh uh, uh versus uh small forwards power forwards does a good job being able to body up 
does have an issue. The one thing that's going to annoy all of us if he comes here, he bites on every pump fake. <laughs> he want to he want to block that. a shot so bad. He man. bites on every pump fake. Just just to put this in <laughs> Bulls fans' memories, do you remember Tyrus Thomas's rookie season where if you blinked at him twice, he would jump to block the shot? That's Walker Kessler. <laughs> yes, bro. He's biting <laughs> on every single pump fake. But what I will say is. Uh, he does a good job of of adjusting his body. He does a good job of kind of with the guard. He struggles a little bit, but he does a good job of following the guard and being able to get the chase down. Now, granted, if that guard pump fakes, he's running through the back of him. <laughs> um, but I, I, I mean, listen, those are things you can teach out of him. And I'll yeah. say this: I don't know how much how much you watched him shooting because a lot of his tape is just not shooting. Uh, but. Follow through isn't bad. Looks like the form needs a lot of work. He shoots from the right shoulder mostly. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I think you could see somebody in Walker Kessler who could turn into a legitimate 3 and D player at the NBA level. Here's the things that stood out to me. First, defensive player of the year in college, which we need defense coming off the bench at, yeah. at a big man position. Yeah. Somebody, the 7-4 the, the wingspan on the 7-1 frame. Like, come yeah. on, man. He has a standing reach of almost nine feet, meaning he damn near can, t can touch the rim just putting his hands up. Doesn't even need to jump. Yeah. Um, but again, 4.6 blocks per game. Now, while everything doesn't translate perfectly to the NBA, I don't care. If you get 4.6 blocks per game in in college, <laughs> you can you can get two per game in the NBA level. Guess what? That would be that would put you in the elite category. Yeah. Like you said, his defense, um the pick and roll, I think Lonzo would use him so well in the pick and roll. Io DeSumo would use him so well in the pick and roll too. Yes. It's a simple game. Like yes. that would be and that's the thing. At the 18th pick if the Bulls are drafting off, filling a hole in their roster, they can do worse than Walker Kessler. But he brings he brings elite rebounding, elite shot blocking, and really, really good defense. Right, Not ready to call him an elite defender by any stretch of the means, but really, really good defense. The offense is almost just polishing off everything else that he does. Defend. He is so good defensively that I say if he ends up at the NBA level only being a pick-and-roll offensive player – that what he brings to defensively would be enough to that. But like you said, the shot, you can see that developing. If not to a three-point shot, you can see him developing a 15-foot uh, mid-range shot easily. Yeah. Easily. And so, like, looking at what he brings now, plus the upside, if you if you develop him, because keep in mind, he's still young. He just, well, he's about to turn 21 years old. Mm -hmm. I really like this guy. Not saying, I, I'm not ready to say that he's the pick I, I want the Bulls to go after, but I really do like this guy. To me, now, and, and I've said on this podcast, I I feel like the Bulls are at the point where they need to go after a two to three year guy, mm -hmm. preferably a three year guy, because you want somebody that could contribute right away. Walker's a two year guy, but really he's a one year guy because that first year he didn't really do much at UNC. Exactly. That's why he transferred. That's why he transferred. But I would absolutely take Walker Kessler at 18 and feel good about it. When I looked at him, and I know people are going to say, you, you're tripping. You, this is, first off, because you usually don't compare white dudes to, 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 to <laughs> like, every time it's a white dude that's athletic, it's like, he's the next Larry Bird. It's like, oh, we ain't got Brad nobody Miller. else. Like, that's, that's got, the, right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> we ain't got nobody else to compare to. Jaron Jackson Jr. Ooh. Think you about Jaron Jackson. I don't hate that at all. Year. Jaron Jackson, rookie year. Now, I do think, right, because Jaron Jackson had the opportunity to start his rookie year, I don't think that Walker Kessler will score as much. But mm -hmm. when I watch how he played, how he was able to switch on to guys who are not a ton smaller than him, I don't think he's got that yet where he's going to be able to stay in front of guards really well and, mm -hmm. and, and dominate, you know, one through five. But right now, he's at three through five, and we've got a lot of tall twos in this league. He can guard a lot of the bigger guys in this NBA one through or two through five to me. Uh, mm -hmm. And I and the the biggest part about his game that that reminds me of Jaron Jackson is just the controlled finish on both sides around the rim. Now, the difference between the two, he don't got that step where like Jaron could be running full speed and mm -hmm. be like, oh, there's somebody right there and I'm a Euro. No, no, no. He, he He's very big country when he's driving to the rim. He's just going to run into you. He's going to run into They're going to have but, to call the charge or they're going to call the block either. Or. But if you <laughs> go head up with them, he will absolutely he absolutely has the power to go through you. Mm -hmm. So, I I like him at 18. I would absolutely like to see the bull. 
I've been high on EJ. I would take Walker Kessler over EJ Ooh. because Walker Kessler already excels in the style of defense that we play. We play the drop defense, and it annoys the heck out of me when I see Vooch confused on it. <laughs> you should be looking like, wait a second, what am I supposed to do? It's a drop defense, Vooch. Come on. It's in the name, bro. What do you think you're supposed to do? Tell I mean, me what you think you're supposed I'm, to do. I'm going to be real with you. Most mugs today be confused on a drop defense. <laughs> That's not like, oh, I'm just quick enough to recover. Because, like, it makes no sense to me. In a league where Stephen Curry and every big in the league is running a pick and roll and the big can shoot, it's like, yeah, let's play back. But hey, that's that's a whole different thing there. Okay. Um, but, but let's say ahead. this: What do we think that Billy Donovan changed the defense this offseason? No. Okay. I don't. I I think that they run with it because, as much as we look at the second half of the season where we had none of our defenders as a slight, as as we're struggling, as this team is is not on point defensively at all. Mm. I don't know if Lonzo's going to be healthy, but when Lonzo was healthy, when Zach was healthy, when Io, Caruso, all of them, that defense wasn't nothing to scoff at. That's true. They were on a string. No, they were on a string. So, And yet I, we still have no updates on Lonzo Ball's knee. But, you know, I'm going to keep that moving. Ah, uh, good Lord. We do want to uh, update you guys on a theory we have about the G League, though. But before we do that, you had to bring up Lonzo, didn't you? Threw it off the whole vibe. You be depressing mugs going into that last segment every time. Just a little depression going into that last segment. It's all good though. Yeah, you know I'm saying I got my wine. Don't worry about it. Uh, before we get to our, our uh, and let you guys know about Bet Online, we have an important favor to ask you. Uh, we put together a survey so that we can help learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us. What you like and don't like about Locked On Podcast. Keep it respectful. You know me and Hayes will both roast y'all. Uh, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long. And everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. Had to say that right because I was going to hype up their heads on that. To take uh, our, our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. We appreciate y'all for the help, man. We really do. Because uh, we just want, hey, man, best Bulls podcast on the net, man. We're trying to get there. Um, if we're not already there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It up. Come on now. Uh, our partners at Better One Line are still the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, sports development, including this year's NBA Finals. Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Let's get into this final segment. Yeah, final segment. Um, so this was really brought about because it's something that you said yesterday. And then we also had a comment um, on the YouTube channel as well. And it was like, all right, let, let's go ahead and throw this in there. Because you had mentioned using the, the the G League as a true developmental league in the way that it was originally meant to be, but really building that up. So I asked you this question. As we're talking about drafters, we're looking at even in the, in the Bulls schedule, yet another workout with another player that's projected not to be drafted in Dominic <laughs> Barlow. Uh, so as we're as we're talking about this, um, what about adding somebody said in the in the comments, though, adding another round? I'm going to change this up by saying. What if we do have a one round supplemental draft for the G League where a team picks players specifically for their G League rosters to develop in that minor league system? What do you think about that? Don't we have that already? No. There's not a G League draft? There is a G League draft, but it's it's different. It's not what I'm what I So the way that I'm envisioning this is You're that saying what, take players from college. And take players straight to the G League. Yes, instead of straight to the G League. So you look at those back. Like basically, everybody at the Bulls have scheduled workouts. <laughs> <with them. laughs> we don't actually want you. We want you there. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, uh-huh. I don't think that they. I think the opposition would come from the college level. I think you would mm-hmm. see. And and here's the thing, right? Maybe if you do something like that, 
it works in a better scenario for basketball overall. What I mean by that. If I draft, if I if I feel like I might get drafted to the G League and not the NBA, I might go back to college and work on my game some more. Mm. More time at college to me always brings a better polished product to the NBA. There's a reason that Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and Michael Jordan and all of those guys that we view as greats came into the NBA and were like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm finna just keep playing this same game I've been playing because I've been cooking this way the whole time. And guess what? It still works here because I know how to play. I think when you get to the one and dones, you're getting guys in here that haven't figured out one. I mean, how many guys have we talked about that? Oh, yeah, they got him in here. And then he grew to seven feet tall or to six, eight. And it's like, oh, he's got to relearn his entire body. Yeah, he's been playing basketball his whole life, but his shot's completely different. His shot point mm-hmm. is completely different. How he's going to attack the rim is completely different. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't Kyle Kuzma like that? Yeah. Didn't Kyle Kuzma come in at 6'7", six, 6'8"? Six, he's 6'11". I, so. I think so. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think that and, – and, and look how long it took him. Like, this is his first season cooking. Like, it, it took him this long to figure out his body. And so – to me, I think that it could improve basketball to that point. I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I think that college basketball would be opposed to it because the one and done has made them so much money and made so much turnover. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of ways to go about it, especially now that they have they do have the, the G League Ignite, right? You can yeah. replace that with a type of draft or we can flip this around instead of saying let's do a draft for the g league what if we do a supplemental draft where it's g league players available to be dra- instead of throwing them in with the nba draft you, you do it that way there's a lot of talent out there, there there's a lot of talent out there i think mm-hmm. i think the interesting thing is like you you have to figure out how what, what the nba is trying to do is figure out how to make it fair for each team yeah Right. So, like, I think if you're going to enter the G League, to me, at, I mean, unless you're, there should be a time limit, right? I don't know if I want you to be able to go straight from high school to the G League unless you're drafted. Mm. Like, you shouldn't be able to just sign up for a tryout to get in there. You know what I'm saying? To me. Um, Because I feel like that then you're, you're, lowering the G League level game and now I'm looking at the G League and I'm like, oh, these must can't play. You know what I'm saying? But I I but then again, right, like if you Kobe and you try for the G League, you're gonna make the team. I don't know. It it's a weird dynamic. It's it's a tough thing to make even yeah. because the hard part for the NBA is right, like, say I see the number one player in high school, he doesn't want to enter the supplemental draft. He doesn't want to go to college. He's gonna basically go play at the the little local circus or whatever for a year, and then just this pick whatever local team. Circus, <laughs> <laughs> not circus, bro. Circuits. Oh, circuits. I thought you said circus. Circuits. I was about to say, God damn! Like I'm when playing. you, like when you're hooping, I got you now. I like got when you're you now. hooping around, you know, like the the AAU and the. I got you. I got you. What, what's it called? I can't think of it. Drew League stuff yeah, like that. Drew you know League. what I'm saying? Where I, I'm gonna just take a year and then I'm gonna go to the. I think the NBA is trying to make that part fair. Mm-hmm. But again, right, like the G League works. Jalen Green's here. Jordan Poole's here. Alice yeah, Caruso's the G here. Works. Now, here's my thing, though. As more G League games are televised on ESPN, is it ESPN 3 they televise it on a lot? I yeah. can't remember. It's one of the, the – do you think that the NBA is going to be incentivized to improve this? Because, listen, while there are a lot of very good G League players, like if you're tuning in to see a specific player, you can see some hell of a games. But I'll tell you what, some of those G League games are very tough to watch. Bro. Rash, bro. bro. I think I tuned in I, to a uh... – I've watched 10 crackheads play better organized basketball. <laughs> <than the street>. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's about – the the hard part is right like the G League is going to be more like what the AHL is than what baseball has. Mm. So it's going to be more like the Wolves sending players to where you're watching it and you're like yeah this is hockey but then like you'll see it they'll make a a a, a cross ice pass and it won't be anywhere near online. And you're like oh yeah these guys are down here not here yet. 
Yeah. Um, I think that's just a product of the game. I think that's going to be no matter what. I think baseball, minor leagues kind of can hide it, right? Because, I mean, at a minimum, right, like, unless you got two god-awful fielding teams, Listen, like, it doesn't I, look not I've like baseball. minor league games that are, that are better than major league games. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, legit, yeah. like, unless you have, like, god-awful defense, when you're, when you're watching the White Sox, um, they bad right now. Don't, don't don't get me started on them. But uh, unless you have god awful defense, like minor league baseball looks like baseball. Minor league basketball won't look like that. You'll have more of the ups and downs, and I don't think any amount of it will will get to the point where it does, unless it ever eclipses college basketball. That's the biggest question with with everything we're trying to put on here. Is the NBA in bed with college? Mm-hmm. Or are they trying to kick college out for their own, you dig, that's already at the crib? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, if I'm the NBA, from a business standpoint, I'm putting as much money into the G League as I can to essentially make players say, well, I don't really want to go to college. I'd rather come here and be on TV right now and be on a high-profile team and have my chance to come up to the NBA. But I don't know if the NBA wants that. Yeah. Yeah. And just to clarify... So the G League does have an eight round, eight rounds of oh, draft a lot. for for the, uh, but that it's primarily made up that of prospects who who are playing the invitational and then they earn the eligibility to be in the draft. I was thinking more so of a hey, these players didn't get drafted in the NBA draft. Let's have a supplemental draft to see where you're going to play in the G League, but. Because you know, I mean, if you played that, in college, you're more than likely going to make an invitational that, to to be able to be, make be eligible to be drafted. Like eight rounds, though. Eight rounds. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad at it if they did. Like back in the, uh, uh, um, because the NBA in the '90s was how many rounds? It was four. Four, I think. Yeah. Four rounds in the '90s. <laughs> um, I feels wrong, but I don't know. Um. I wouldn't be mad if first and second you go to the NBA, third and fourth you start off with two on the G League team, but they have to sign you to a two-way contract, so if you play well, you have the opportunity to come up. See, that's what I disagree on, because I think if you have a draft specifically for the G League, then that's where you need to be, at least for a year, with no opportunity to come up. Mm. I don't know, because cause like if you got the potential to play, play. You know what I'm saying? Like that that kind of goes to like, should high school players be able to come to the NBA straight away? Yeah. If you can do it, do it. Right? Like, listen, I don't, I don't fault Kwame Brown for coming to the league early. I fought the Washington Wizards for picking him. <laughs> That's your fault. Kwame Brown, bro. Guess, guess what? Charlotte got it right and then they traded it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the Bulls got it wrong. I don't. I don't fault the teams for for I mean, making. We got that. it right. We drafted Lamarcus Aldridge. We just traded. Him. Uh, we, we drafted Eddie Curry. With yeah, that too. I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for the Trump card, but you talk about me depressing people. You hey, just brought up hey, Eddie Curry on hey, a podcast. Hey, my favorite story with Eddie Curry. They said that man was the biggest man in the game and had five points and six rebounds. Played thirty eight minutes. Or played. Uh, what is it? No, because what is it? Yeah, play 30 minutes. Played the whole game. <laughs> That's terrible, man. Hey, and they said Jerry, uh, uh, the Bulls was there and was like, nah, it's just a bad game. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. Hey, thank, thank, thank God. Thank God. We uh we have a decent front office in both. <laughs> thank God. Thank God. That's crazy, man. Uh, that is wild. Good is times. Crazy. Good times. We all got PTSD. Uh, absolutely, bro. Marcus T. They couldn't even assign that man to the G League, bro. That's how we bad gotta he was. We got to stop ending episodes. <laughs> I'm sorry. You brought we up Eddie Curry, bro. You episode, sent me bro. down the spiral. You sent me down the spiral bringing up Eddie Curry, bro. Now now all I can think of is bad drive. Hey, hey. Guys. Every time Hayes brings up, every time Hayes PTSD acts up with old Bulls <laughs> players, y'all got to just tweet him and be like, it's okay. Just everybody, just everybody tweet him. It's okay. <laughs> all right man for my ptsd kicks in even more man oh man <laughs> jesus man hey man follow That's us on crazy. everything at locked on bulls also follow me at pat the designers at p-a-t-t-h-e-d-e-s-i-g-n-e-r because of your ptsd 
I'll let it ride tonight. It's all good. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I Z N. Thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen of the day. And I know it's your first listen because I post the podcast at like 6 30 in the morning. So it has to be your first listen. Yeah. Other than that, go and check out Locked On NBA for your second listen of the day, where the Locked On experts, even our own Pat the Designer, break down everything from the NBA playoffs to anything affecting all 30 teams in the NBA. They're available wherever. You get your podcast, but that is it for us for today. Thank you for tuning in. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes, and we out, y'all. Peace. Peace, y'all.